Hello, I'm Tom Bailey, and in this episode, I'm joined by David Parrish, who is a global business coach, keynote speaker, and author. So, David, hello, and a very warm welcome to today's episode. Hello, Tom. I'm really pleased to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for joining. And whereabouts are you in the world right now? I'm at home in England, uh, just north of Manchester, on the edge of the, the Pennine Moors. Beautiful. And uh, sun is shining here in the UK. The pubs have just opened again, so things are starting to return to normal post-COVID. So on to the subject of David. And as I mentioned, David works as a worldwide business coach, keynote speaker, trainer and author. And he specialises in helping creative entrepreneurs to achieve even greater success in harmony with their values and objectives. So the title for today's episode is how to design a business for your version of success. And David is going to show you how to do that in just under seven minutes. So David, the first question for you today really is who are your ideal clients? Well, my ideal clients are those um, businesses in what we call the creative industries. And so that means, you know, typically web designers, creative agencies, photographers, people working in video and film, even architects sometimes, people in music, um, publishing. So all those um, businesses that are somehow fundamentally artistic, but nevertheless are still businesses. And I'm looking particularly for those businesses that are keen to grow uh, and achieve even greater success. And it's really useful having that niche as you get to know the business the challenges um so what's the typical biggest challenge that these businesses will face from your perspective i think the real challenge is how to become successful but in the right way in other words to achieve success not only financially which of course they want to do but also creatively so that they can choose the the coolest creative projects that give them that satisfaction and thirdly, in terms of lifestyle. So I think it's really about getting the right kind of success. Um, and that means that they need to carefully design their business, you know, with a, with a formula instead of just, you know, letting it develop organically and ending up in the wrong place. Yeah. And just because you mentioned that at the end there, the um, letting it develop organically, if that does happen, what's the typical impact that that will have on their business? Well, in the worst cases, uh, people end up in what I call having the wrong kind of success, mm -hmm. which sounds a bit daft, but it, you know, I, I've come across many examples where people say, we've grown the business um, and we now have you know, 25 employees and turnover of millions of pounds and top class clients, but I'm not really happy because I don't do the creative work anymore. I'm just managing yeah. other people. And I am trapped within my own business. And because, you know, and I can't take a holiday and it's putting pressure on my family life. And so, you know, in my view, that's a failure to design the business. And ironically, a lot of designers are guilty of that. They do fantastic design work for their clients. But the one thing they haven't designed is the business that will give them commercial creative and lifestyle success. So I think that's, that's the worst um, thing. And that happens because people don't look ahead. They just get busy and employ more people and get a bigger office uh, and grow in a sort of willy nilly way without yeah. stopping to think. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And I guess we've got this um, new CEO who used to be creative. What What's one valuable piece of advice that you'd give to somebody that's, that's got to that position that will really help them solve that problem so they can get that creative spark back? Well, um, of course, when people get to that position, you know, we need to do a repair job. And, you know, mm -hmm. I talk then about redesigning your creative business. But uh, I try to get people on the right track earlier on, ideally, rather than yeah. do re remedial work. Um, mm -hmm. It's about, you know, helping people at an earlier stage. And therefore, my advice is that you should be super clear about what you mean by success. So I ask yeah. people at the beginning, do you wanna be successful? And they say, yes, of course, <laughs> that, that, what a stupid question. But when yeah. I ask them exactly what success means to them, it's different for everybody because it's a different combination of the kind of work they wanna do, whether they wanna grow, work in teams or alone, um, you know, lifestyle issues. And we need to be clear about that so that we can get to the right point. 
Perfect. And and one question I always like to ask is if there is somebody listening who is a creative um, business owner, what's one valuable free resource that you might be able to offer them to really help them solve this problem um, from now on? Well, I've wrote a, written a couple of books and the first mm-hmm. book I wrote is actually about how you can combine creativity, your creative talents with smart business thinking. So it's a yep. guide book on business, particularly for creatives. It talks about marketing, intellectual property, uh, financial management, and it's called T-Shirts and Suits, a guide to the business of creativity. And I'm using T-Shirts and Suits as a metaphor for the, the cool creative people being smart with business. And that's actually, um, it, it's published as a paperback, an audiobook, an ebook, and it's a free resource in English, right. though it's available in other countries and languages too. Right, and what I'll do is I'll share a link to that actually, because I've got that in front of me here. So um, www.davidparish.com forward slash products. I'll drop that link below this podcast and video as well, so people can access that and, and download that ebook. So thanks for sharing. And we've got a couple more questions. This one's slightly off topic, and it's more about you, David. So mm-hmm. what I'd like to ask is, what's been your greatest failure or, or learning and um you know either in life or in business and what did you really learn from that mm-hmm. well i admit i've made lots of mistakes but i think that the main one that i want to refer to here is very early on in my career which is a long time ago i'm not as young as i look um my first creative enterprise i, I had the attitude that you couldn't have it both ways you know if, if you wanted to make lots of money you had to sell out your values if you wanted to stick with your values, you, you were never going to make money. And it's that kind of binary way of thinking, you know, the starving artist and the only pure artist is a poor artist kind of yeah. thinking. But, and, and that holds you back. And I find some creative people still think a little bit that way. But I came to learn that um, knowing about business, you can use business tools and techniques creatively. You can use them in terms of your own values and your own objectives. Uh, you don't have to follow a, a bad path or a, a particular path with you, by using business. So my message is to embrace business and adapt the tools and techniques of business to your own values and objectives. And I guess we, a lot of us get in, into business for the long run. So you might as well do something you, you enjoy and is in, in line with your values and, and objectives as well. Thank you. And the last question is, what is one question that I should have asked you that would also give great value to our audience today? Um, I think a good question would be, can creative entrepreneurs use their creativity not only in the studio, but also in the business office? And do you think they can? I think they can. It's probably a different kind of creativity and it opens up a question of what does creativity mean? A lot of people think of it only as artistic creativity, you know, the ability to draw or sing or whatever. But Mm -hmm. there is a a wider kind of creativity that we use, you know, you might call ingenuity, problem solving. And that's in, you know, we find that in all fields of human endeavor. And I talked about it at TEDx Napoli, where I gave a talk about these two kinds of creativity. So my message is, yes, they can. Artistic creativity in the studio and then in the business office, this wider kind of ingenuity to construct, um, you know, creative business models and to do business differently. Um, so we can be creative, yes, in the office as well as the studio. Great. And, and I guess, you know, some, some of us say we're not that creative, but ultimately, as long as we can find that creativity and, and apply it, um, yeah, why not? Absolutely. Great. So, David, thank you so much again for your time today. I really appreciate you joining and sharing your knowledge and experience with us. My pleasure.